Hey there everyone, Clifton here with Clifton Creative Academy and welcome to another tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm actually going to be teaching you how to build a vacation website. This could also be a bed and breakfast website or any kind of website where someone needs to book a property. Uh, this website is actually built with 100% free tools from the WordPress re repository. So you won't need to buy anything to be able to build something like this other than your domain and your hosting. Uh, and installing WordPress, everything else is pretty much free. So let's go over some of the characteristics of this website. So the first thing you'll notice is that we have this huge featured area uh, where we're featuring the property itself. And then we have our navigation on the top right and our logo on the top left. You also notice that we have what's called a transparent header, which is a very big trend these days uh, with websites. And then uh, a huge uh, statement here in the middle and then a button right here in the middle as well. As you start to scroll down the website, you'll notice that the header sort of transforms into a sticky header so that the menu is always in view as the user is scrolling down the website. I'm also gonna be teaching you how to build these uh, nice sections here where you can have an image and a little bit of text and a double button. And then I'll show you how, to, how I created these dividers here to divide each section. And then we'll build different types of sections. So we'll have sections with two columns, we'll have sections with four columns. And then I'll also show you how to create a nice gallery. Here is just a very simple gallery that showcases some nice images that you can actually flow through in what's called a light box. Okay. And then uh, we'll also create this uh, call to action section here where the user can go ahead and click on the button and be redirected to a place where they can book this property. And in there, we're also going to be creating this form uh, where the person can go ahead and request the booking. We're also going to learn how to build the inside pages or the internal pages of the website where we're going to have an about the property page that also features different sections that we can easily build out to showcase uh, the property uh, even more. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to create uh, anchor text, uh, sorry, anchor links. Anchor links are essentially links that you can click on. So for instance, if I click on the amenities, it slides me down to the section of the homepage that features those amenities. Same thing with the gallery, it does the same thing. And then if I click rates, rates is above this, it actually will slide up nicely with that really nice transition. So we're going to learn how to do all these things. And uh, if you like this video, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel. And then go ahead and hit the like button and also hit the notification bell so that you can be notified when I release new uh, videos. Uh, those activities will essentially help the channel out and it'll help me keep making these videos. Also, uh, just remember that this is something that we're building with free tools. So we're using free themes, and a free plugin. And the great thing about that is I'm going to be introducing you guys to some really, really awesome free plugins that you can use to build a nice website like this. And then I'll introduce you to the pro versions of those websites in case you want to take things further. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started with building out the site. Let's review the tools that we're going to be using. As I mentioned, this is going to be a website that is built with 100% free tools. The theme is going to be free and the plugins we're going to be using are free. Now, every single one of these plugins have pro versions uh, to them, and they also have free versions. So we're going to be focusing on using the free versions to basically build that beautiful site that we have. Let's quickly go over the list of items that we'll need. So we'll need WordPress. We'll need the Cadence theme. And if you're not familiar with Cadence, Cadence is a pretty hot free theme right now that is not available in the WordPress repository. It's actually, you have to go to their website to download this theme, but it's free. And the one of the key features of this theme is that it allows us to build a custom header and a custom footer in addition to some amazing page editing capabilities. So I highly recommend this uh, theme. It's 100% free. Download that and upload it to your WordPress uh, install. The next tool that we're going to be using is the page builder called Beaver Builder. And if you're not familiar with Beaver Builder, Beaver Builder is one of the top page builders uh, in the WordPress space today. It's got over a million people are using Beaver Builder. They have a pro version, which most agencies use. That's their pretty much their go-to plugin. But we're going to be using the light version. But you can you can create some pretty impressive and pretty incredible websites using this. So go ahead and download the light version. Then the next tool that we're going to be using is uh, the Ultimate Add-ons and the Power Pack for Be Beaver Builder. These are two separate plugins. And what this is going to allow us to do is essentially add additional modules because the Beaver Builder Lite comes with a limited amount of modules. The uh, add-ons for Beaver Builder Lite and the Power Pack for Builder Builder, Builder Lite, excuse me, that will add some additional modules uh, for us. 
Uh, and then for our form that we're going to be using, we're going to use WP Forms Lite, the free version. And then we're going to be using a visual styler. Now we're going to use this minimally because there are some styling things that we want to do. And my goal here is to show you how to create this site with little to no code. Matter of fact, there's no coding um, in this tutorial. Uh, in later tutorials, we'll address some coding stuff and so on because I do believe it's important that you know some code. But the idea here is for you to be able to build something quickly, build it using free tools. And if you're just starting out, it'll actually help you learn how to use these tools and prepare you for the use of the Pro Tools because I do recommend eventually going over to Pro Tools if you're going to be doing this for clients or if you're going to be doing this as a business. And finally, we're going to be using Pexels. Pexels is where we're going to get our royalty-free images for the website. And then we'll have everything that we need to go. So let's go ahead and uh, set up our WordPress and then install all these plugins. Okay, so now I have a free and uh, fresh install of WordPress with the default theme. We're gonna go ahead and start setting this up right away. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here to the dashboard. I'm gonna set up my general settings. I'm gonna go to settings. I'm going to go to general and just make sure that everything here looks good. It does. My site title is correct. My links are correct. And one thing I do wanna change is I wanna make this my time. So make this to whatever time suits you. I'm in the Pacific time, so I'm gonna go ahead and save that now. Then the next thing I wanna do is just to make sure that my permalinks are pointing to the right place. So I'm gonna to go to permalinks. Under permalinks, I'm gonna make sure that this is set to sample post the way this is right now, and this looks great. I'll go ahead and save that. And then the next thing that I wanna do now is I want to add my theme. So to add a theme, go to appearance and select themes. Right now we have this default theme. I'm gonna click on add new. And typically I'd be searching for a theme, but if you search for Cadence here in the uh, theme repository, you'll notice that these two show up, but the Cadence theme itself does not. And that's because you actually have to go to their website, download the theme, and then you'll have the theme available for you to use. So I've already downloaded this theme. I'm gonna click on upload theme, choose file, and I'm going to go ahead and search my computer for Cadence. That's gonna come up here. I'm gonna go ahead and select this one, open and install now. It's gonna go ahead and install the theme for me. As soon as the theme is installed, then I'm going to activate it. Now that it is activated, this is now my primary theme. So I've taken care of installing my theme. Now the next thing that we're gonna do, if you remember, is we're going to also go ahead and install these plugins. The plugins that we need are Beaver Builder Lite, Ultimate Add-ons for Beaver Builder Lite, Power Pack Lite, WP Forms Lite, Micro Themer Lite. And we're gonna install all these theme, all these uh, plugins and go ahead and get started. So to install a plugin, you basically go to your dashboard, go to plugins, click on add new. Okay, and we're gonna search for these plugins. So the first one we're gonna search for is Beaver Builder. Okay. So here we go, Beaver Builder is available. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and click on install now. Okay, another thing is if you notice, by searching by, for Beaver Builder here, I also have available to me ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder Lite and the Power Pack Lite for Beaver Builder. So I'm gonna go ahead and install those as well right now without leaving the page. I'm gonna go ahead and install that as well. I need that. And then the next thing that I need here is I'm gonna need the WP Forms. So I need, I'm gonna search for WP Forms. Whoops, I misspelled that. WP Forms. And here it is, right here. I'm gonna install this. Now notice I'm doing all my installing first before activating anything. That's because in the interest of time, I wanna make sure that we have all our plugins ready. The next one that I need is Micro Themer. Micro Themer is our visual styler. This is gonna help us style certain elements of the uh, site that we build that are not available as to us in, in the page builder, okay? So this is a free, um, Visual Styler from Micro Themer, very popular and very well supported. As you can see, this was last updated six hours ago. <laughs> so uh, these guys are pretty much on top of it, okay? So let's check again to make sure we've installed everything. So I've got the Cadence Theme, the Beaver Builder Lite, Ultimate Add-ons, Power Pack, WP Forms Lite, and Micro Themer. I've installed all these now. So I'm gonna go here to my installed plugins where all the plugins will now be waiting for me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bulk select all of these Okay, I'm gonna go to bulk actions and I'm gonna click on activate and apply. All right, so now all my, all my, um, all my plugins are now installed, okay? 
and ready for me to use. Now it says right here, complete power pack light for Beaver Builder activation now. Let's go ahead and click on that. I am going to skip this and I'm now gonna save changes. Okay, that's just a little activation we have to do, but essentially all our plugins are now ready for us to use. So now if I go and visit the front end of the website, you will notice now that the site is now ready with the uh, Cadence theme installed. We have our default blog, blog layout here, and we're definitely gonna change this, right? Because we wanna be able to have our homepage layout here versus the blog style. So let's go ahead and change that right now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna click on new page. Okay, it's now gonna take us to the editing section of WordPress. I'm gonna close this out. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to label this. I'm gonna call this home page. Okay, call this home page. We're going to uh, publish this. And now I'm gonna show you some of the great features of the Cadence theme that we have. So Cadence theme actually has individual page building capability actually, or page settings. So we wanna set up these settings because if I go and I visit this page now, right? So if I go uh, straight to the home page here, you'll notice that we have this uh, page header. We also have our regular header and then the content area, which is boxed. I want this to be set up for a page builder. And to do that, I need to make some page settings. So I'm gonna come here, click on edit page. And I'm gonna come over to the right side here. And if you look over here, you'll see this page editing, this page setting um, uh, button uh, icon. Go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna set up a few things. So the first thing that we wanna do is we're going to set up our page to be full width. Right now it's boxed. So I'm gonna select full width, okay? The content style that I want is unboxed because the default is boxed. So I'm gonna say I wanted this to be unboxed. And I'm going to enable, I'm gonna disable the vertical padding. So I don't want there to be any padding between my content. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. Okay, everything else, I'm gonna leave exactly this, the way that it is. I'm not gonna make any changes anywhere else and I'm going to go ahead and save this. Now that this is saved, if I visit this page now, okay, we'll now notice that our content area is now spread across. Now the next thing that I wanna change is I wanna get rid of this home page header. I don't want all my pages having this extra home page header. So to do that, I'm gonna go back to edit page. I'm gonna come over back to our page settings, okay? And what I'm looking for is the page title. I'm gonna go ahead and disable that. I'm gonna say update. And now that's disabled. If I view the page now, it's fully ready for us to start building out our home page. The last thing that I need to do now is I need to set this up to be the home page, right? Because if I click on the uh, go going to the home page, I'm still seeing this hello world default blog post layout. So to change that, I'm gonna go to the dashboard go to settings, go to reading. I'm gonna select a static page under the Your Home Displays. And under Home Page, I'm gonna select the home page that I want, save changes. Then I'm going to check it to make sure that it looks exactly the way I want it to look, and it does. And now we are ready to start building out our home page. Okay, before we begin building the sections of our home page, we're going to build out our header. First, okay, we're gonna build out the header and then start building out the sections. The header is actually controlled by the Cadence WP theme and to be able to access those settings, we're gonna go ahead and access the customizer. In the customizer is where we will see the Cadence WP theme options. Now, once we're here, we're gonna go straight to the header. And once you enter this edit mode for the Cadence theme, if you start hovering over the elements in the header, you can see the places where you can make changes. There's also this tray that opens up that allows you to be able to add sections or add items to the sections in the header. And this is one of the strong suits for the Cadence WP uh, theme. It's one of the things that I really like. You find uh, you typically find this kind of editing capability in pro themes, but this is a free theme that is offering this. And what's great about this is you can drag and drop different items into different sections, right? So I just drag the button in here and I can put it in any area that I want and go ahead and start making changes. So what we wanna do is we wanna just our header is actually very simple. We just have a, uh, a logo, a text logo, and our navigation. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start editing my logo. So I'm gonna click on the gear section right here, and I'm gonna change the name to the name of the vacation home. Okay, I'm also gonna change the tagline, 
which isn't visible anywhere uh, on, in the design, but it is visu visible in your meta tag. So we'll change that. So vacation home is what we're calling the calling that. And then I also need to customize the font here, right? And the size. So I'm going to click on this pencil icon uh, like this. And oh, I'm already I'm already in the editing for the logo. So the next thing I need to do is I need to go to the design. So up here there's a general tab and there's a design tab. I'm gonna click on design. I'm gonna select the font option and I'm gonna change that to Arizona, which is the font that we are using for that. And then I wanna increase this to about 40 pixels. So it's a little bit bigger, a little bit more prominent. Okay, and that looks pretty good. So that's it. That's all I needed to do for my header. My header is now set up. I'm gonna go ahead and click publish to save those settings. And now I know what you're thinking. Wasn't this a transparent header? We will produce that transparent effect after we've built out our sections. And uh, once we've done that, then uh, it will lay over that section and it's actually a pretty cool process. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and exit out of this and then proceed to start building out the featured area. Okay, so let's build the first session of our uh, featured area. We're trying to replicate this effect right here where we have this a uh, great big featured area with the welcome to La Villa uh, text and then a button and some sub uh, subtext here as well, right? So to do that, what we're going to do first is we are going to go ahead and activate our Beaver Builder uh, uh, editing screen here. So to do that, just click on Beaver Builder while you're at the on the home page right here at the top in the WordPress admin bar. It now opens up the Beaver Builder editing section. And here you can now see all the tools that you can use from Beaver Builder to build out your page. We have modules, we have rows. You can't use templates yet because this is a pro feature, uh, but we do have modules that we can use. And we have modules from Beaver Builder itself, Power Pack modules, which gives us a little bit more uh, modules to work with. And then we also have Ultimate Add-ons, which gives us even more modules to be, be able to work with as well. We also have access to the WordPress widgets. Okay, and then all the way here to the left, we have more global editing capability. So here you can set up your global settings. For instance, if you wanted all your default rows to be, let's say you want it to be 1300 uh, pixels wide, then you can set that up now and everything will appear a little wider uh, for you. So you can also access any responsive editing. So you can see here you have the access to be able to edit in a, as a tablet or edit uh, as well as a um, uh, mobile device as well, right? So let's go ahead and exit the mobile editing and let's just edit on our desktop. So the first thing we want to do is we want to start dragging in, we want to drag in a row. So I will click my uh, elements icon here, it'll open up for me and I'm going to go to rows. And I typically like to start with a three column row, that way I can put my content in the center. So now that I've put out this row, I'm going to close this tray and I want to start making changes. So you can see it's giving me three columns. I can start working with these columns, but there's also an outer section here. And this is a little bug with uh, Cadence, the Cadence theme in that it's hiding the top of the row. So I really can't make changes. I can't select the selector that's going to make allow me to be able to make changes to this row. So I found a way to be able to fix that. And the way you do that is just go ahead and save your work. So click done, click publish. It loads back up here. There's nothing here. And what we want to do is we want to make some changes to this page. So I'm going to go ahead and click edit page. I'm going to access the cadence page settings for this particular page, which is the icon all the way here to the right. Select that. And what we're going to do is right here where it says boxed, okay, right here where it says box, I'm going to go ahead and select that on the content style. What that's going to do is it's going to create a boxed, uh, a boxed section for me, normally where we had that full width section, but now it's going to make it boxed. I'm going to go ahead and click update. And now when I click launch Beaver Builder, you can do that from here, launch Beaver Builder. It's going to open up for me and you'll see now that I have access to the editing toolbar for this section. This is what I needed that was covered up before. So that's fine. Once we're done making our changes, it'll actually resolve itself and it won't be a problem anymore. So the first thing we want to do is go ahead and click on the wrench. It'll open up the settings for this row and the row opens up in a modal window so you can make your changes. And we're going to make some, some changes here. So the first thing is we want to make sure that this is full width. Right, so the background is all the way stretched to the full width of the screen. It's boxed right now, but that's okay. We will make that change once we're done making our changes. Then the content width, we're going to leave the same and everything in here is fine. Now we need to add our image, right? So the image that we need is the background 
for that uh, for this image, which is this background right here. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the background section of the row settings. I'm going to select the drop down and I want a photo. So you have the option of a color gradient photo or video. I'm going to say I want a photo and then it's going to ask me to upload that photo. So I'm going to go ahead and select the photo. I'm going to grab that photo from my um, from my computer. OK, so it's one of our photos right here that we use for this project and I'm going to come up on it any second. There it is. OK, so we're going to go ahead and add this photo in there. Right. So go ahead and click open. Here's our photo. I'm going to go ahead and put an alt tag here. Featured photo select. And now our picture is already in here. OK, now I also want a little bit of spacing here as well. So if you scroll back up here to the row style, uh, you will see that the height is set to default. I want to set the height to a minimum height. I'm sorry. We actually want it to be a full height. So it takes up the full area of the page. You can, can you see that? OK, so now it's a full height. OK, the other thing is we have a overlay. It's kind of like a brownish overlay going on here. So I also want that overlay for my site. So I'm going to come down here. And if you keep scrolling down just below the uh, just below the background photo options, you'll see a background overlay. OK, we want the overlay type of color, even though you can have one that's gradient. We want the one that's color. I'm going to select a color from the color selector here. And we have a sort of a kind of a brownish, uh, very uh, sunsetty type of color. We're going to go ahead and create, make it a little transparent so we can still see our image. And I'm going to try to get as close to that uh, one as, as I can. So here we are. It's a little close. It's a little darker right there. OK, it's perfect. The other thing is so I can remember this color, I can also save this color. So by clicking this plus sign, it will save it for me to a preset. That way I can select at any time. And then I'm going to go ahead and save this. OK, so now I have my section open and it's ready. Now, the only thing I need to do is to drag in some text. OK, so we have this text right here where it says welcome to a villa. Right. So we're going to go to ours and we're going to drag in a heading. Now, if you look at the traditional modules that are set here by Beaver Builder, there is no actual heading module. Right. So essentially what you can do is you can grab in a text editor. Right. And you can go ahead and put in your text. Right. And then um, you can change this actually. So I can select this and make it a heading one. OK, then if I go to my style and uh, right here, I can change the color to white because right? I want to be able to see it. And the font uh, is fine. Um, I'm going to go ahead and center this right here. So on the font, I'm going to go ahead and center it. And then I can go ahead and increase the size. So I can I'm gonna make this about about 65. OK, I'm going to save out of this and then so see how it kind of curves to the bottom here. Right. So this is nice and wide. Sorry, this is nice and wide. The other one isn't. So I can I can fix that. I just basically stretch this out and stretch this out. Right. So give me some. There's a reason I like to use a three column. Uh, capability here because it just allows me to be able to make better uh, alignments for elements. So I'm looking at this um, right here and I want this to be a little bit bigger. So I'll make it go ahead and make it bigger. Maybe that big. OK, that looks good. Then we can also make our changes for the different uh, for the different uh, mobile devices. Right. So this will be my uh, tablet size. And then I can go ahead and make the make it even smaller for my mobile device, right? For my phone size, and that's literally how you can set up uh, you can set up the heading area for this. Now I want to show you something else. So let's go ahead and exit out of that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete this entirely. Okay, I want to say goodbye to that. And what we're going to do is we're going to come here and we're going to do a search for heading. OK, now when I do that search, you notice that Power Pack has smart headings. Uh, there's a fancy heading capability and then Ultimate Add-ons has a heading module as well. I'm going to go ahead and grab that one because I like that one a little bit better. Um, 
because it's it's exactly a heading and I can focus on making the headings instead of it being a text editor and then making a heading that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and go and paste my uh, heading in there, right? I'm not gonna link it to anything. I'm not I'm gonna put anything in the description. Uh, under the topography here, I can go ahead and make my changes. So I want this to be an H1, so it's really big, like that. And then we're gonna make it even bigger, okay? Using our slider here, okay? So under fonts, uh, I'm gonna align it to the center, all right? And then I want my color. I wanna change the color of this. So I get more editing options with this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this color. Let's go ahead and save this white color so we can use it again. Uh, and then uh, what else? I can make change, I can do padding, I can change the description, I can do a lot more here, I can create more mar margins to the top. It's really awesome and it gives me more options. That's why we wanna use this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that and I've got the welcome to the villa section already set up. Now we also have some text over here where it says relax, breathe, and enjoy. Now you'll see how we'll do this. So instead of me dragging in another um, heading option, I'm just gonna select the one that I have and in here, under the general section here, there's a description for this heading. So we have relax, and what is that saying? Relax, breathe, and enjoy, right? So relax, breathe, enjoy. And I'm gonna put about five spaces in between this. So one, two, three, four, five, and this one, one, two, three, four, five. And then I'm gonna go ahead and customize this, right? So I want this to be a little bit bigger, so I'm gonna go to topography. I'm going to scroll down to the description options. And here we get to change the color again to white. Okay, and I want the font to be slightly bigger. So let's say 18 pixels, maybe 22 pixels. There we go. Okay, and save. All right, and then the next thing that we wanna create here is this uh, book now button. So I'm gonna go back to mine, click on the plus sign here. And if you notice Beaver Builder, the light version comes with no buttons. The pro one does. However, that's okay. We'll do a search for button. Whoops, button, not bottom. <laughs> button, I'm gonna grab the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder Lite button here. And we're gonna say this is book now. Um, we're gonna leave the link as is for now. We'll go to style so we can style this. And I'm gonna leave it at default, but I want an icon. And the icon that I want is a calendar icon. All right, and I believe it, we'll use this one. Okay, I want it before the text. And now we can change some colors. So the color that we're gonna use is white for the text. The hover color will remain at white. The background color is kind of a nice rosy pinkish color here. So there, it's right around there. And I think it's right there, a little bit more rosy. Okay, here we go. All right. Okay, and now we're gonna save this uh, color so we can use it next time, right? So now our button's now done. All right, we don't need to do anything more. I'm gonna go ahead and click save. Now the other thing that I'm noticing as I'm looking here is that the color of this one here, the overlay is a little bit brighter, okay? So I want that same color. So we're gonna come here and we're gonna work on ours a little bit more. I'm gonna go to the row options. I'm going to go down to the uh, color of the overlay by scrolling down here. And there's just a little bit more red in it. So I'm gonna scoot this over uh, higher right there. That is it right there. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and save that so I can use it next time, okay? And now our session's looking pretty good, right? So if we were to look here, let me go ahead and publish this. Done, publish, save. If we look at this and we now look at this one, it looks pretty close, okay? All right, so now if you notice, we have this little box area right here. So there's space on the sides, we don't want that. And our header is not overlaying our, uh, our featured area here. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that right now. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over to my custom, uh, to my page here. I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit page. And we're gonna do that little workaround. Click on the page settings all the way to the right. I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna set this back to unboxed. We're gonna update that. Now it's updated. Go to view page. And now we have more of a full width, okay? It's great. 
all the way to the end. This is exactly what we want. So the next thing we need to do now is we need to make our header overlay our featured area. We need to turn this into a transparent header. The transparent header is actually controlled by the Cadence WP uh, theme. So we're going to go into the customizer by going to customize. Then we will go to header. And under header down here, we're going to activate the transparent header. We're basically going to turn that on. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to say we want to go to the design tab for this. All right. And we're going to start changing our color. So the site color on the transparent header is going to be white. We're going to select white here from the options that they have. Our navigation colors are going to need to be white as well. Okay. Uh, the hover color for it, I want that to be white. And the active color can be white. You know what? Let's make the hover color slightly brownish just to give it a little bit of change. So I like it to be close to white, but just make it off it, make it a little subtle that something has happened. All right, and we'll bring our color in here. There we go. Nice. Okay, and then everything else we're just gonna leave alone because um, everything is, you know, it's pretty much done here, right? So the other thing we wanna make sure of is that on every, uh, whether you're on a tablet, that you can see that, uh, that the logo is still there and you can see that the logo is still there. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All right, excellent. So now that we're done with our transparent header activation, I'm gonna go ahead and publish that. Okay. And the next thing that we also want to do is we want to make sure that as we scroll down, that while we're scrolling down, that the uh, header turns in, stays sticky on the top, and then the colors also change. So we're going to go back to our header settings, and I'm going to click on sticky header. We're going to enable our sticky header, and we'll say yes, and we want that on the whole header. Okay. It's going to ask us if we want to enable the main row shrinking. We're going to say yes. We're going to leave this at, at 60 uh, pixels, and we're not going to do any changes to the logo there. We're going to do the same thing for mobile. We want the whole header. We're going to enable it shrinking, and we're also going to leave that at 60 pixels as well. Okay. Then we're going to go to design because when you when you start to scroll, the background is going to change to white, and we want the colors to have a contrast. So when you go to design, click on the site color. We want the site color to be slightly brown here. So I'm gonna go here and I want it, I want a dark brown color, kind of matching the tone of the site here, the theme of the site colors. There we go, that looks really good. And then the navigation colors are also gonna follow this same uh, color scheme, right? So the navigation color itself, we want brown, um, the hover color, we also want that to be brown, but maybe a little lighter brown. Okay, there we go. And then the active color is going to be brown. All right, we're going to leave the background uh, items alone. And when we scroll down the sticky header background, we want that to be white. Okay, and then we can go ahead and publish that. Now that that's published, we can test this out, right? So we can see if we start to scroll, you notice that how it changes the color right there, you go back up and now it's the transparent header. Okay, it looks really good. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build out the rest of the sections of our homepage. Building the next section is really easy. What we're going to do is we're going to activate the Beaver Builder on this page and we're going to add a two column row by dragging it right below the featured area here. So now that we have this row, I'm gonna go ahead and make this full width. And I want to give it some padding so that it has some breathing room around the content. So we're going to give it a padding of 120 uh, pixels. And you can access the padding by going to the advanced tab. I'm going to go ahead and save that. So now all I need, all I really need to do to replicate what we did here is add an image and then also add a heading, a blurb, and dual buttons. So let's go ahead and do that. I've already uploaded all my images. So all I need to do now is grab the photo module drag that into the left column and then it's going to give me an option of selecting a photo so when we come here we're going to select photo and i believe this is the one i get all my photos from pexels.com where it's royalty free and can use it on any project without attribution now that i have my photo in there i need to now style it and what i the effect i'm looking for is to lift it off the page and you do that by getting a really nice shadow in it so if you scroll down under the, we can expand this actually, 
under the general tab, I'm sorry, under the style tab, we'll go ahead and add our shadow. So select the radius and shadow section. We're going to select a dark shadow to begin with. And I want 10 pixels on the X axis, 10 pixels on the Y, and we're gonna do a really nice uh, spread. So about 40 pixels spread. Then I want to make the shadow a little more subtle so it's not so harsh. And that gives it that lifted off the page style. Okay, so I keep it here, a little transparency. I'm gonna click the plus sign to save that transparency so that I can use it on my other styles. And then we can now save our image. That looks really good. Then the next thing we need to do is we need to drag in our heading, blurb, and dual button. To do that, just go ahead and open up the modules box, search for heading. We're going to grab the heading from the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder. And the heading that we want here is, uh, let's see, we'll use the same wording, enjoy a beautiful getaway. All right, and then uh, the description is just some lorem ipsum text, which we'll grab from here as well. Okay. Now that's really good. If we scroll down, we want this to be uh, left aligned. And then we're going to go to the uh, typography where we can do the styling on this. So for the styling on this, the font is Playfair display. We want it to be normal, it's fine. We're going to increase the size to about 40 pixels. Then we're also going to change the color to a brown a nice dark brown color. Okay, then the next thing we need to do is we need to drag in a dual button. So you come here and we're gonna do a search for button. And here's the dual button under the power pack modules. I'm gonna add that in there. The first button will say explore. We'll link all this later. The second button will say book now. Okay. We want our buttons uh, to be aligned to the left, which it already is, is great. And then we're also going to style our button. So the background color that we're looking for, we're gonna make this white for the background. The text color will be brown. So we have come from safe from our presets here. The background hover color will be that sort of pink color and the text hover color here. We want that to be white. Okay, we're gonna replicate the same thing for the second button. Text color. Brown. Background color is going to be, background hover color, sorry, in the pinkish. And the text hover color will be white. There's also a border around these, so we're gonna go ahead and add our border. So if I scroll up here, there is the border style. I'm gonna say I want this to be solid at one pixels. And we can even select, if you scroll down here, a border color. And the color is going to be brown. Okay. And border hover color, we'll make that the pink color here. Okay. And now we'll save. Then to make this stand out a little bit more, I'm gonna add some padding around the column. So I'm gonna select the column editing section here, go to advanced, and we're gonna add 40 pixels around. Okay, we'll save, uh, before we save that, actually we want this to be aligned in the center with that image. To do that, we have to equalize the heights. So under this column style, go to equalize heights, we're gonna say yes. That makes the columns equal. And then we're going to say we want the vertical alignment to be centered. And now it's nicely centered, save, and we've now got our beautiful section already created. I'm gonna go ahead and click, click done, publish, and now we are ready to move on to the next section. So you see how this looks actually pretty good, right? Really nice, okay? So on to the next section. In the next section, we're gonna be working on the uh, amenities piece section here. So we have this nice amenities area. We have an intro to the amenities and then these four um, amenities. <clears throat> so four columns, so just four columns and uh, the buttons. 
And this is uh, very easy for easy for us to build, especially with Beaver Builder. So let's go ahead and start doing that. So I'm gonna go to our site that we're building here and I'm going to turn on Beaver Builder for this page. And Beaver Builder has loaded. And so now what we're going to do is we're gonna go ahead and drag in uh, two rows, okay, to represent that initial um, part where we have the amenities heading and then the intro. We're gonna make this full width and I'm also going to set up my padding. We'll give this 120 pixels on the top, 120 pixels on the bottom. We'll go ahead and save that. And then now what we need is we need a heading. Okay, now I could go back here and grab another heading by searching heading, okay, in the modules. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save myself some time. I'm gonna go ahead and close this out and I'm gonna go up to a heading that I've already created, which is this one here, and I'm gonna click on the duplicate icon here. That gives, it creates a duplicate icon for me and I can just drag this over to this column and just change the heading to say amenities. And that's how quickly <laughs> we've gotten that part done. Okay, now the other thing is I wanna make sure that this is nicely uh, this is nicely framed, so I'm gonna go ahead and add some padding here. So we're gonna go to column settings. I'm gonna go to advanced, and I want some padding on the right side. So I'm gonna just add like 40 pixels of padding. Yeah, that looks much better. Then I'm gonna drag in a four column row to showcase what those amenities actually are. And so now I have this nice four column row here. And then I'm gonna start plugging in the different amenities that we have. So each one of these, if we look at the vacation home, each one of these has an image, right? With the little shadow and then some text and, uh, sorry, a heading and some text. Now we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and create this very quickly and very easily. So what am I gonna do? Well, one of the things I can do is I can reuse the image here and just change out the image because this already has the settings that I want. So to save myself some time, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this image. And I'm going to pull that image down into the section here, just like that. And I'm gonna do that three more times. Okay, and just pull the images in. And as you can see, that saves me a lot of time. Okay. Then all I need to do now is change out the images for the appropriate images that they're supposed to be. So I believe the first one was romance. So we'll come into that photo and I'm going to change the photo. So I'm going to change the photo to the romantic photo, which is this one here. Insert, okay, save that. Then I'll do that for the rest of them. All right, so now we've got all, all our correct photos in. Now we just need the text that goes underneath, right? So I'm gonna do the same thing, I'm gonna duplicate this heading and text combination that I already have, okay? And I'm going to use that to set up the rest. So this was romance. And we have a little bit less text, right? So I'm just gonna delete some of this text here. And then I'm going to change the topography and the font size. And I want a much smaller font size, so let's make that 20, we'll go with 22. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead and save that. All right, now that I have this, I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this across. So change this over, bring it here. All right, and we'll call this one activities. Duplicate again. I'm gonna call this spa and massage, duplicate again, and this will be called dining. Okay, so now if we compare it to the site that, that we have before, we can see that we've basically replicated this. Now we just need to add our buttons and create a little bit of spacing here. So I'm gonna go back to mine and I'm going to go ahead and search for a dual button, right? Now I can go ahead and search for dual button and drag one in and start to customize it. But instead of doing that, 
I might as well just, I've already done this before, so to save myself some time, I'm going to grab this dual button, duplicate it, and I'm just going to drag it all the way down here. And now, now this is created. Now we need a little gap right here. So to add that gap, I'm going to come here and I'm going to type in divider. Okay, so we have some dividers here. I'll just take this one. This is fine. Put it right between the two column and four column. Okay, that looks pretty good. And I want to align with icon or image. And here the icon I'm going to select is the heart icon. Okay, so this looks good here. All right, and then we get to configure what our line is going to look like, right? So we want a dashed line and we want a gap of 40 pixels. Oh, that might be too big. 20 pixels. Okay, so that's good. And then we're going to style this. So the line color that we want, we're going to go with a very subtle light brown. And the color of the icon will be a darker brown color like that. And maybe just lighten that up just a little bit. Add a little bit of red in there, a little rust. Okay, and then the next thing we want to do is we want to create more gaps. So I'm going to go to advanced and I'm going to add a margin of 40 pixels in between. Let's see here, maybe even Let's see 20 pixels is good okay so now we've created this gap now if you notice on the other side there is actually no divider here right the divider is really up here so what we're going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this I'm going to drag it in between the rows here so right in between the rows it's going to create a new row and Right here, I'm going to make this go to the style here of the, sorry, of the divider. And we want this divider to be 50% of the row. Okay, let's look at that now. Let's bring that right about there. 30% is good. Okay. All right. So now we have the spacing here. So now that we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and save this one. And then right here, what I'm going to do to keep the gap, but to keep the gap, I'm going to basically make this color here white. I'm going to disable the icon, right? So it did ask me if I wanted to have an icon. I'm going to say, I want this to be a line and save and that's going to keep the gap for me okay and that session is now done go ahead and save our progress publish and now we can move on to the next section which is going to be the rates part of the page so far it's looking pretty good in this next section we're going to be building out the rate for the room section and showing off some of the features of the room. And this one is actually very easy. So if we look at our site that we're duplicating here, that site already has the image on the left, then it has the text, uh, the heading and the blurb, and then the different uh, amenities for this room or the different characteristics of the room, and then a dual button right here. So this would be very easy for us to recreate. So we're just gonna go to ours and I already have a section that is similar to the section that I want to create. We have a divider here. So what I'm going to do is I'm first, I'm going to copy this divider. So I'm going to go activate Beaver Builder. I'm going to copy the divider and then I'm going to pull that divider down below the last section that we created to create that divider effect. Okay, so here that is. And then I'm also in addition to that, going to duplicate this entire section, this entire row, click on the duplicate key. And now we have a second one and I'm going to drag that down below our divider. Okay. So here it is. All right. So now we can go ahead and start configuring this, right? So the first thing we want to do, we're going to change the image to the bedroom. There it is. Can save that. 
we'll keep our book now, except in the in this case, what we want to do is want to center it this time. So I'm going to go to style for that particular element, and we are going to center align it. Let's save that. And so now we have everything that we need in here. We have a little blurb. We have the uh, book now. And then the thing that we want to duplicate here are these boxes right here. Okay, so to do that, just simply go to your rows like that. And we're going to grab a two column row and we're going to put it right inside the column. And then we'll grab a second set of two column rows and put it above that one. And now we're ready to start plugging into different uh, amenities. So to do that, we actually are using a combo module called Infobox. What the Infobox box does is it's a module that combines an icon or an image with a heading and a, and a bit of text all in one module. Okay, this is a huge time saver. But we only need the icon and the text. Okay, so we're going to leave the icon at the top. We're going to select our first icon and the first icon that we're going to have is going to be a bed. Okay, we're going to show off the bedroom. So we have the bed. And then as we scroll down here, it looks good. Uh, the content, we want this to say bedroom. Like that. Okay. And we'll leave the description blank. Then we're going to go to style where we get to style uh, the text here. And we also get to style the info box. So I want actually, sorry, we're actually going to go to typography. And we're going to style the typography. We want it to be normal topography. And we're going to be using a muley font. So something that isn't so heavy. All right. Oh, looks like I'm styling the prefix. I actually want to style the heading. Okay, so muley. And we want this to be normal. Okay, looks good. All right, that looks good. And then uh, for the icon, we want the icon to be a little bit bigger, maybe 20 pixels uh, bigger. And that looks good. And then we also want the color of the icon to be brown. So that's our accent color. Okay, we'll save that. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to put a border around the actual column itself. So under style, if you scroll to the bottom, there is the border settings. We're going to make this a solid border. We want the color to be brown as well. And we want one pixels all one pixel all the way across. Just like that. And then we're going to go ahead and save this. And now we've got our first uh, section. Now, one thing I can do so that I don't have to go through all that styling again is I can delete this column and then duplicate it. Whoops, sorry. That's duplicating the icon. What I meant to do is duplicate the actual column. So if I duplicate this column, here's a column again, right? And then I can also add some padding around it. So go to the column, advanced, and let's put 10 pixels of, sorry, not padding, margin. 10 pixels of margin around it, save, and we'll do the same here. Column settings, advanced, and we want 10 pixels all around and save. Okay, so now it looks pretty good. Now the next one that we're gonna do in here is gonna be Wi-Fi. So I'm gonna come here to the content. We want this to be Wi-Fi, right? Or free Wi-Fi. And then the icon that we want is the Wi-Fi icon. And that is now done. Okay. So now I'm just going to go ahead and duplicate this, drag it into the next column here. I'm going to go ahead and style my column, right? So we want 10 pixel margin all the way across and then under style. Here we want our border to be solid, one pixels across, and the color is brown. And then we'll save that. And then we'll change this to a different benefit. We'll replace this with 
a pool like that. And under content, we'll call this oops, content pool. And then last but not least, we have one more amenity. Actually, what I'm going to do to save myself some time is I'm just going to delete this column and duplicate this one. There we go. All right, now it's duplicated. And then we're going to add room service. Okay, general, and I believe an icon we have for the room service. What is the icon we use there? Is the two glasses touching? All right, so I'm going to replace this with wine. Let's see if that comes up. Let's see glass. There it is. Okay, that looks good. Go ahead and save. All right, so now that looks pretty good. Now I think one thing that I do wanna do is I wanna make sure that the text is a little bit smaller on the inside here. So I'm gonna come in here. Uh, go to our advanced topography, set up our margin here. Save and also make sure the margins are the same and they are good. Okay, so the thing that I want to do is I want this text to be a little smaller. So I'm gonna go here, go to topography, font, and the text size, let's make that 18 and save. Oops, looks like I made the text change to the wrong one again. There's so many titles here. Okay, great, here we go. We'll make this 18, that looks better. And then I will do that for all the other info boxes that I have. Okay. So I keep everything uniform, nice and neat. All right, and our section is now set up, right? So the only thing we need to change is this text here. So I'm gonna come here. I'm going to get rid of some of the text too much, okay? And then also, I'm gonna say the room dollar sign eighty five dollars per night and save. And now that section is now complete. Okay, so the very next section that we need to build is gonna be the gallery section, right? So if we look at our reference site here we have this beautiful gallery and then the call to action on the last page and we are done with the home page once that's done okay so that's going to be the next step uh, that we're going to build out okay so to build out our gallery we're actually going to need the help of one more plugin which is the Envira Gallery plugin. And that's because the light versions of the builders that we have don't actually come with gallery modules. So go to your dashboard, go to plugins, click on add new, and you're going to search for Envira, E-N-V-I-R-A, gallery. The Envira Gallery plugin is actually a very good uh, portfolio plugin, a good image gallery uh, plugin and it's regularly updated. As you can see here, the last updated date is seven days ago. So it's very well supported and there is a pro version of the plugin. So go ahead and install this plugin, click, the, click on activate and it will be ready in your dashboard. And then we're gonna go ahead and create our gallery. So I'm gonna go to Envira Gallery, click on add new, and we're just gonna call this the Villa Gallery, okay? 
and you have options here to drag in files from your computer or select from other sources, including the media library. I already have my images in the media library, so I'm gonna go ahead and select it from there. So I just click on select, and I wanna just grab a couple of images. Now to grab multiple images at a time, go ahead and hold down the command key if you're using a Mac or the control key if you are using a PC. Okay, hold that down and you can select multiple images at the same time. I just need six of them. Whoops, that's too many. All right, six of them. I'm gonna go ahead and insert it into the gallery and you'll see that my images show up here, right here in the bottom. And here you can make different changes to this. You can edit these images and give them different names, provide your alt text and so on. Okay, but I'm just gonna leave these like this for now. And then we can go through the different tabs and configure how we want our gallery to show up. So the next tab here is the configuration. Uh, section and I want this uh, right here. It says number of columns. I want to have three columns. I'm going to leave uh, lazy loading uh, um, checked because I wanted to uh, save time when it's loading. Uh, everything else I'm going to leave the same with the exception of the gutter width. I want to change the gutter width to 20 pixels and gutter width is essentially the spacing between each 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 image. Excuse me. Everything else I'm gonna leave as default. Then I'm gonna move over to Lightbox and make sure that that is enabled and that we are using uh, a Lightbox to show our images. The image sizes and the captions uh, will be the same. Uh, we'll, left, we'll be left alone. And uh, then I'm gonna go to Mobile. And Mobile features, you'll notice that these are available in the Pro version. So we're gonna leave this alone. However, it still does render very well on a mobile device. And that's really all we need to do. So once we're done creating this, I'm gonna click on publish. And when you publish your gallery, you will get a short code. You actually get a couple of short codes. So you have a short code with the ID and a short code with the slug. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and copy this short code here. Okay. And then I'm gonna go to the front end of the website. And now we're gonna build out our gallery section, which is gonna be very easy to do. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and activate Beaver Builder. Okay, and then now it's done. And then I want a column. So we're gonna to go to our rows and I'm gonna select the one column row. I'm gonna drag that right below the room section. I want this to be a full width column. And under the spacing, I'm gonna keep with the spacing of the other uh, rows at 120 pixels padding top and bottom. Excuse me, that's actually left, so top and bottom. Okay, to give me some, some room, okay? Then I'm gonna go ahead and open up the modules and the module I'm looking for now for this short code is gonna be the HTML module. I'm gonna drag that in here, okay? And I'm going to paste in my short code. Click save. Now it may not render right away, um, but it is there. Um, so while that's there for now, I also want to add my text. So I'm going to go ahead and grab another one of these. I'm going to duplicate the existing heading and text blurb that we have there. I'm going to put that directly above my HTML. I want this to be centered. So we're going to go here. And we're going to center this. Okay. And then I also want to have more texts. Okay. So, but first let me change this to say what this actually is. So we'll call this the gallery. All right. And then here's our text. And I want more text. So this is Lorem Ipsum. I'm just going to repeat the text. Give it more depth here. Great. And I'm going to go ahead and save this. And the other thing that I want is I want the text to be a little bit more uh, in the center and there's a lots of different ways to do this. We can add padding to each end and which will which will each end of the column here and that will bring the text in a little bit more so I can add padding to the right so I can say 120 pixels on the right and the left and that brings in everything okay and then I can keep doing that until I'm satisfied. However, I don't want to do that in this case. I prefer to use columns. Uh, because columns give me more flexibility. So I'm gonna go to the rows here. I'm gonna drag in a three column row, put that right on top. I'm going to drag the heading and the blurb right there in the middle. And I'm just gonna extend this how I want. So that this way I have more flexibility to, for this to 
present the way that I want it to. So that looks pretty good. The last thing that I want to do is I want to add a divider, right? So I'm going to come here, I'm going to grab this divider. So we're going to duplicate this divider and I'm going to pull it down, drag it down, sorry, to right there in between. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Whoops, actually that should be technically on its own new row like that. We'll delete this, okay? And so now this is in its own new row. And then I'm gonna go ahead and save. Done and publish, okay? So now you notice it doesn't show up right away, right? but it is there. So all I need to do now is refresh my screen and the gallery now appears. Just a beautiful gallery. And then let's check if our light box works. Yes, it does, okay? And these are the images of our villa. Okay, so looks really good. Now we, we, have, we only have one more section to create and that is this bottom section here where you have the call to action to go ahead and book your getaway today. We're gonna do that, it's gonna be really fast and it's gonna be really easy. Okay, so the final section of our home page is basically a call to action. It just has a heading, um, some more text and a button and this nice background. And this would be very incredibly easy to build because it's simply a replication of the featured area that we have at the top. So let's go to our page. And if I scroll to the top here, we can see that we have a heading, uh, some sub, a subheading and a button. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to launch Beaver Builder for the page. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this entire section by hitting the duplicate icon for this row. It's gonna give me a second version of it. And then I'm going to drag that all the way to the bottom of the page. Okay, here we are. Okay, so now that I've done that, I wanna do a couple of things. The first thing is I want to get rid of the height, uh, the full height requirement. I'm gonna go ahead and set this to a minimum height requirement. And we will just create uh, some spacing here. Let's see here. We'll go all the way to 750. Okay. Then the next thing that I want to do is I want to change the image, the background image. Okay, so I'm going to go to the background section of the row settings and I'm going to switch out this image for an image that I prefer, which is this one here. Excellent. Then the only thing I need to do now is change the text, right? So the text is going to say book your getaway now. Okay, so book your getaway. Let's make sure that it has the same thing. Yeah, book your getaway today. Okay. And save. Then we're gonna click done and publish. And this is now complete. And the final step is we're gonna change this bottom footer to say, uh, to not indicate that this is built with Cadence WP, even though that it is, but we, you typically you would wanna put your own information right here, right? So maybe we wanna put like site by Clifton or something like that. So to do that, that this area is controlled by the theme. So I'm gonna go to customize. I'm going to access the footer section Okay, and you can see it opens up the bottom tray here and then here are all the widgets and items that I can drag into the footer, very similar to the header. And this is one of the strong suits for the Cadence WP theme is that you're able to create any kind of layout that you want for your footer and you can drag in extra widgets if you want to. But in this case, we're not dragging in any extra widgets. We're just gonna go here to the copyright gear. I'm gonna click on that and I'm simply gonna change this to say uh, to say site by Clifton. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and publish that. I don't need to make any other changes. And when I exit, I'll have a customized footer. Right, just like that. Okay, and we're finished with the home page. And our home page looks very nice. And we can now proceed to building the internal pages. 
Okay, now that we're done with the home page, we're gonna proceed to build the internal pages. So if we look at our site here, we have an about page uh, that goes to an actual about page, right? And then we have amenities, uh, gallery, rates, and book now as part of our na navigation. Of these nav of this navigation, only the about page and the book now page are separate pages. If you go to the home page, you'll notice that we have anchor links that slide down to various sections of the home page. So we only need to create really two pages and then the anchor links to complete our navigation. So let's go ahead and create the about page. Now, if we look at the about page, it has a full height um, uh, section and then we have these dual sections as well and uh, a section here with um, two columns and some images and some benefits there. And then the rates per night section is there. And then the call to action section is also there as well. So this is actually fairly easy to create very quickly. And we will go ahead and do that now. Now the Beaver Builder page builder has a lot of fantastic capabilities. And one of the capabilities that I like the most is the ability to create a new page based on the layout of another page. Now I'm not talking about saving a template and loading it into a blank page. I'm talking about literally creating a new page based on the layout of a, an existing page. And let me show you what I mean. So we have our home page here, right? And we're gonna be trying to create an about page that looks a little bit similar. So we've got the double columns and different sections here as well. So all I really need to do to do that is I just need to activate Beaver Builder on the current homepage that I have now. Okay, and then I'm gonna move here to the left. And right here on the settings uh, option for this page, I'm gonna click on duplicate layout. Now, when I click on this, what it's going to do is it's literally, literally going to create a new page that is already loaded with the layout from the homepage, okay? And it launches me immediately into the dashboard, into the editing section of that page. You can see right here where it says copy of home page. It literally creates a, a copy of the home page. Now, what I'm gonna do here now is I'm gonna change this title to about, okay? And one thing that you also wanna make sure that you do is that you change the permalink. So you see the permalink here still, still has the permalink of the home page uh, as a copy. I'm gonna go ahead and click on edit here and we're just going to delete that and change it to the actual correct uh, permalink here and I'm gonna click save, okay? Now, if I visit this page right now, I'm gonna go ahead and publish this, okay? If I visit this page uh, right now, clicking on view page, you'll see that it looks exactly like the home page, okay? The only difference is that it's got the about page, but it is a second page now. And you can see now our, our navigation now has a new link, which is now about, okay? So now on this page, I can now start cha making changes to it and that sort of speeds up my workflow. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna acti activate Beaver Builder here, okay? And we're gonna change this title to about, Okay, let's save that. And then I'm also able to change the background to a background that I prefer. So we want a different background than what's on the home page. So let's go to the background. I'm gonna click on edit. And we're going to select a different background. We'll select this one. All right, so here's our new background. I'm gonna click save there. Now the other thing that I want is I don't want this a uh, full uh, height uh, section for this uh, for the section here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to change this the full height option to just the minimum height option. All right, and now it's looking more like an internal page. I'm going to give it a little bit more minimum height. Uh, let's see here, let's just extend this a little bit to right over there, so it's just nice and manageable, and that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and save that, and now we've completed the top section uh, sort of page header for the internal page here. Then I'm gonna move on to the next section and start making my changes actually quite rapidly. So in here, we're gonna be talking about the property, right? So that's what this says here, oh, it says history. So let's actually make that change so that we're, we're matching up here. So I'm gonna come here and I change the title to about the property, save that, and then this text here actually says history, right? So we can just put in a little history there. And then we are going to change the image. 
Okay. So it's literally just going through and replacing that section with the appropriate images. All right, I'm going to save that. And now this is done. And so then the only other thing left to do is to change this bottom section here. So if we go to the bottom section of the actual site, we know we notice we've got architecture, a blurb, and then these different benefits, the bedrooms, the living rooms, the kitchen, and the pool. So to change, to match up with that, I'm just going to go back to this section right here, and I'm just going to start making those changes. So instead of amenities, it's going to say architecture. We'll save that. And then we've got these two column row uh, sections going on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab a row that has two columns. I'm going to drag it in between uh, right below the four column row. And then I'm going to pull in two of the images along with their titles and blurbs, right? So we have this right here, pull that in. And you can see we're reusing these sections to save us time. So we don't have to build everything from scratch again, right? So now I notice that I have these four columns. I only need two. So I'm going to delete the empty columns. And now I've successfully replicated that section. Now I just need to change the images to match and change the title. So I believe here we had the bedrooms, right? So we had the bedrooms. And the second part, we had the living rooms, right? Then down here, we had the pool. And here, I believe we had we had room service. I'm sorry, no, we had dining actually. Okay, so let me just make sure that it all matches. Oh, actually, no, we had living rooms, the kitchen, and the pool. So I had that all wrong. Let's fix that. So that was actually the pool, and this was actually the kitchen because we're talking about parts of the property. Let's see, so the kitchen. Okay, now I just need to match the images, change the images. So if I'm talking about bedrooms, this has to be a bedroom. So we're gonna come here, we're gonna change this, we're gonna grab one of our bedrooms. So that right there, select. And then here we're going to change this to a living room. So these pictures, guys, are I got these from Pexels. Just go to pexels.com and you'll be able to grab uh, similar pictures or the same pictures even. So we're looking for a living room. So there's my living room. Save that. And then the kitchen, I have a picture of a kitchen. And here we have the pool. Every nice property's gotta have a pool. So here's some people playing in that pool right now. Okay. And now we've completed that section, right? So we now have the about, the history, the architecture. We've built this all out really nicely. This is also a part of the page to reiterate the cost of the room. And then we don't need a gallery here uh, on this one. So I'm just going to delete this gallery section. The entire section is gone. And now we're back to the call to action. And all I need to do now is save my work. And my about page is now complete. And it's literally that simple to recreate a page or build a new page based on an existing page. Uh, next, now we're going to go ahead and create our contact uh, page and the amenities page, uh, the gallery and the rates uh, anchor links that are going to link to the uh, different sections on the home page. So before we create our anchor links, let's go ahead and create our contact page. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and turn on Beaver Builder again for the about page and I'm going to create a duplicate of this page so that I can have automatically have this section already set up for me. Okay, so if we look at our reference site here, you'll notice that if you go to book now, which is the essentially the contact page, but if you go to book now, you see that you have this nice book now uh, uh, transition and then you have this nice form here. So we're gonna create the same uh, exact form. So to do that, 
Okay, I'm gonna go to the about page that I've just created and I'm gonna make a duplicate copy which will create a new page for me. So I'm gonna click, go down here and I'm gonna click on duplicate layout. And we're gonna call this the book now page. Okay, so book now. Okay, and I'm also remember to change your permalink. So to do that, just click on the title. You'll see it right here. Click on edit. And if you just delete this, you can basically make this the correct permalink. Save. And publish the page. Now that we're done publishing, we're going to go straight to edit by clicking on convert to Beaver Builder or launch Beaver Builder. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to delete these sections because we don't need these sections. These are not going to be the sections that we're going to do all the rows. We only need the row that's going to allow us to create the form section here. So it's really just one full width uh, section here. So it's really this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just set this up now so that it is uh, full height instead of a minimum height I'm going to go full height all right everything's centered I'm going to click save and then I'm just going to delete the rest of the sections so and the dividers as well because we won't need these so this beaver builder just makes it really easy you just basically find the section you don't want click on the x it asks you if you want to delete it and it's deleted and we're almost done already right so I'm also going to delete this button we're not going to need this button right now so I'm going to take that out and then I want to click done. Okay, so the only thing we need to do now is to insert our form. But before we create our before we insert our form, we need to actually create a form, the booking form. Okay, so to do that, I can I can get to the form in a couple of ways. I can go up here and click on the WP Forms link in the admin bar and select Add New, or I can go to the dashboard and come down here to WP Forms and click on Add New. Right. Either way, will take you to this editing section for you to create your form. Now, the thing I really like about WP Forms, even the light version, is that they have some forms that are already set up for you. So you don't have to start completely from a blank template, although you could start with a blank form if you wanted to. But essentially, what we're going to create is a modified version of a contact form. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on this simple contact form here. It's going to load up the form for me. Excellent. So now that we're here, I can go ahead and start making my changes. So I'm definitely going to need a name field. I definitely want an email field. What we don't have here is a phone field. And you can see right here, the phone field, address fields, and date and time, these are all grayed out, but that's okay. We're going to use a single line text field here, and we're just going to rename it by clicking on it. We're going to rename this to be phone number, right? So we want your phone number. If you're going to be booking this place, we're going to make it required, and that's all we're going to do there. Okay, so then the next thing that we uh, want, if we go back to the add fields tab here, is we want to know how long they're gonna be staying. Now we could use a single text field for that, but we're just gonna use a number slider. The number slider uh, form field is actually quite a nice unique field that uh, WP Form has that allows people to select a value using a slider, right? So we're gonna go ahead and edit this and we're gonna ask them uh, how many guests okay and we can limit the number of guests so let's say they can only have six guests all right good so now that we've done that we also need one more uh, question we're going to ask which is basically how many nights are they going to stay so instead of just doing this all over again i can just go over here duplicate this yes yeah, say yes i want to duplicate it and then i can go ahead and make my changes really that fast so how many nights and we can give them a minimum of three nights and a maximum of six nights, say a maximum of six nights, so about a week, right? And then uh, let's say uh, up here where it says how many guests, I want them to have at least a minimum of, a minimum of one guest, sorry, okay? Excellent, all right, so now we've got the name, the email, phone number, the number of guests, number of nights, whoops, let's fix that little typo right there. Okay, number of nights and then comment or message. I'm just gonna change this to say additional information. Okay. And then right here under the uh, 
where it says submit, we're gonna change this text on the submit to say book now. And uh, to do that, just go to the settings, okay? And under the settings, which you click on settings, you will see places where you can make changes to the form itself. So the first thing I'm gonna change this to is the book, we'll call this the booking form. Oops, booking form. And then in the submit, we'll just say book now, all right? And then we can go to our notifications. This is where you can set up where you want it, who you want to be notif notified, okay? And what fields to send over. It's very, very simple. And then you can even change the email subject. So it says new entry, simple contact form. We're gonna change that to new entry booking form, okay? Under confirmations is the message that you want the uh, form to return once they've successfully submitted the form. So it says here, thanks for con contacting us. We'll be in touch shortly. Let's make that a little bit more appropriate. Thanks for booking with us. We will be in touch with you shortly to confirm your booking, okay? Now that that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and save the work. And you see this happens very fast. I'm gonna grab the embed code for this, which is right here. Go ahead and copy that. And now that I've copied that, I can now go to the Contact Us page. So I'm gonna close out of this by clicking the X on the far right corner here. I'm gonna go to the home page here and navigate to the Now Book Now page, which is right here. And then I can now go ahead and add that form. And to do that, just activate Beaver Builder for this page. I'm gonna go ahead and drag in a three column row, which is my favorite, okay? And I really wanna work in this middle row right here. So let me just organize this a little bit so that it's just the, white, the right width that I like. All right, and then I'm going to grab an HTML module and I'm gonna paste in my form and click save. And you can see when you first put it in, it looks a little jumbled and kind of messed up, but that's okay. Go ahead and click done, publish. And when you refresh the page, you will notice that everything will organize itself correctly, okay? So now we can't quite see the we can't quite see the labels on this form, so we're going to have to uh, customize the form, okay? So to customize our form, the first thing we wanna do is we wanna give it a, a darker bar background and we want these uh, labels to be a lighter color to provide some contrast. So go ahead and turn on Beaver Builder for the page again. We're gonna select column settings, go to the column, okay? And under column settings, I'm gonna change the text for the entire column to white, okay? And instantly you can see now, we can now see the labels, right? Okay, the other thing that I also wanna do is I wanna set up a background, okay? That's gonna be a color, and we're gonna use a dark color, all right? And we're gonna give it some opacity. So it's see-through, so you can still see some of the background in the, in the, uh, in the picture, in this section but also be able to outline the form as well. I'm gonna give it a nice padding to create some spacing. So 40 pixels all the way across. All right, so now that's looking very nice. I'm gonna click save, all right? And our form is pretty much done. Now there's one more thing we need to do. When I click done and publish, I want you to I want to show you something. If you look at the form now, let's go ahead and refresh this page. If you look at the form, you notice that the book now button is gray and the text is now white. Okay, so this is not very good. It's not very easy for someone to be able to see this and we want them to definitely be able to see this. So to make changes, we're going to use the Microthemer Visual uh, Builder to change this button, okay? So when I click on the Microthemer, um, it loads, but I just noticed that there seems to be an error. Typically when you load up Microthemer, you'll get a tray that allows you to make changes, but this is the challenge with using uh, free items sometimes. When you use free plugins, it's very difficult to get uh, uh, support because it is free and their resources are pretty thin. And then the other thing is that sometimes you may not get the version that actually works very well. So this is what we call a setback in process, but that's okay. It doesn't mean that we can't make the change, it just means that we can't use Microthemer. So let's go ahead and exit out of this. 
We'll exit out of Microthema for now. Okay, and we'll make this change a different way. So I'm going to exit to the site front end, which will take me to the front end of the website. And in looking at this, I just need to make this button a red color, right? So to do that, I'm going to be, I'm going to have to use the uh, customizer. And to do that, just go to hit on customize. All right, and we're going to have to implement some CSS. CSS is basically a cascading style, style sheet, which is a code that we can use to basically turn this into something that we can actually see. So the first thing I want to do is I want to access the additional CSS capabilities of WordPress, which, which is right here. And then I'm going to use a developer tool that comes with Chrome, which allows me to inspect by right clicking anywhere on the page. I'm going to go ahead and inspect this element which is the button. To do that, just click on the inspector tool, which is at the far uh, left of the tray that opens up when you're inspecting. And we'll hover over this and click on it. And it'll immediately show me what selector is controlling this button. Okay, so in looking at it, I can see that this has a class of WP forms submit, right? And this is a button. So I'm going to go ahead and just copy this text right here. Just copy that. And I'm going to paste it in the, in the CSS section here. Then I'm going to put a dot right in front of it, indicating that it's a class. And then two brackets, so an opening bracket and a closing bracket. And then I'm going to create a space between the brackets so you can accept my code. Now this is going to be very easy. I'm going to test if this actually will target this specific button. Okay. And to do that, I'm just going to start typing in background and color. And we're just going to go something easy, red. Okay. I noticed that when I did that, there was no change. So I'm going to add a tag called important. Let's see if that made any change. Yes, it did. It made a change. So that means I was able to overwrite the styling uh, of that item. We can even add more instructions here. So I can say I don't want a border. So I'm going to say border none. Okay. And I'm going to add the important tag. Now it's typically not semantically correctly correct to add, have to add an important tag, but it's what we have to resort to. So now it's now looking a lot better. And you can you can do more things here. You can say that you want a box shadow, right? So we can go box shadow. And we will say we want five pixels to the right, we'll take 10 pixels to the bottom. And then we will also do a blur of maybe 30 pixels. Okay, to give us a nice blur. And then we will mark a zero for the spread. And I want the color to be, uh, let's make the color grayish. All right, like that. And that just gives us a nice little subtle um, blur right there, right? So, whoops, I think I have one too many fives there. All right, and it looks like we have to say important. There we go. All right, so uh, maybe we can make that a little darker. Let's go two, two, two. There we go. So it stands out a little bit. All right, and then the other thing that we want to do is we want to. I'm going to copy this again, this whole text that we have here, and repeat it. But I'm going to delete all the border box shadow stuff and just leave the background color. And I'm going to put a, a colon hover in front. And let's make this change here. Tomato. Okay, yes, there is a tomato color. <laughs> so when we hover over it, you can see it turns that tomato color right there, right? All right, so we overcame our little snafu with uh, Microthemer. And I'm, Microthemer is a great uh, plugin. Hopefully, they'll get that fixed so that it doesn't have that uh, issue. But now our book now page is now completed. Okay, so the next thing that we need to do is uh, conclude with setting up our menu. 
and uh, making sure that the links to the other sections of the home page actually match up to uh, the different sections, right? So we're going to create some anchor links to kind of slide down this page and give us more of a navigation. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our menu. To do that, go to Customize. This will give us access to the theme options. We're going to select Menus, which is a uh, WordPress uh, action here. We're going to create a new menu. We're going to call this our main menu. Okay, and we're going to set it up as a primary menu and also the mobile as the location. Then we're going to click Next. And now we get to add some items, right? So I'm going to add the home link. I want the book now link and the about page. I'm going to reorganize this here. So the about page is above here. So we need uh, three more. Um, we need we need three more items, right? So those items are going to be custom links because they're going to be anchor links. And so to set that up. We're just going to go here to custom links. We're going to grab the URL of your site. And at the end of that URL, you want to type in a hashtag. And the first section we want to navigate to with this link is amenities. Okay. And the label is going to be amenities. We're going to add that to the menu. Then we're going to repeat the process for gallery. And rates. Okay, so now it looks like we have our menu all set up. And it looks pretty good. I'm going to move the book now to the end, and then I'm going to go ahead and publish this. Great. So one thing you'll notice that now our menu is now properly organized. It looks really good. And now we need to basically create the anchor links to each of the sections on the home page so that when we click on amenities, it takes us to the amenities and when it takes us to when you click on rates it takes us to the rates section and when we take, click on gallery it takes us to the gallery section twisting my words here okay great so to do that here is what we are going to uh, we're going to need to do we're going to go ahead and turn on beaver builder which is great and now that beaver builder is on we're going to scroll down to those rows that we want to we want the uh, the anchor links to highlight once we click on it. Okay, so now that we're at the section here, the amenities, I'm gonna click on the row settings for this section. I'm gonna go to advanced, and under the advanced, I am going to add in the label that I created, that hash label, right? So that in this case, it was amenities. Remember to type it in exactly as you had it, right? So I have a capitalized A, and then the rest of the uh, word. Okay, and then another thing I want to add here is a little animation. So I'm going to do a fade in animation. It's going to go for two seconds, just going to fade in the um, section uh, very elegantly, and I'm going to save that. Okay, and then I'm going to repeat the process for the other section. So we also have a rate section here. I'm going to go to advanced, scroll down. We're going to put in the ID of rates to match up with the navigation we created. All right, I'm going to save that one as well. And then I'm going to do it for gallery. Okay, so advanced. Come here, gallery, okay, and save. Then I'm going to click done, publish. I'm going to refresh the screen so that all my stuff comes in and make sure that everything looks good, right? So now we have our site and it looks really, really nice. We've built a very simple website uh, using <laughs> completely free tools to be able to do so. Now, uh, when I click on amenities, watch what happens. It's, it scrolls down to that section. If I click on gallery, it'll slow down, scroll down to that section and rates scrolls back up to that section as well. This is what we wanted. So we now have a full navigational menu and we also have uh, a nice animation that happens whenever we, if we refresh the screen here, see all these areas kind of slide in very nicely, nice and subtle, nothing too much. And it looks great, okay? And so this concludes the development of our Vacation Home website. I hope you really enjoyed the tutorial and were able to follow along. I'll be sure to leave descriptions. Um, I'm sorry, I'll be sure to leave uh, links in the description to all the tools that we use, including that little snippet of uh, CSS code that we had to use for the uh, Book Now form. And uh, if you really enjoyed this uh, tutorial, go ahead and please give it a like. And then if you're not subscribed to the channel, please subscribe and remember to hit that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I release new, new videos. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.